Do you think I could make it? Let's try it, shall we? Just for science! Yeah! Hello and welcome back to our Sturgeon Viking, and we're going to be doing a siege in the first part here, and we're hopefully going to be taking Jarmaris, among other things. Now here's the thing, I am trying very hard for a big expansion push here into Western Empire territory. I can only hope that the Sturgeons don't decide that they want to make peace at this point, because if they do, we might have some issues. Because let's say that they decide to make peace just as I'm about to take it, well, that would be pretty bad. As you can see, they have been a little bit more leaning towards peace in the sort of empire territories. So I'm a little bit worried about it, but there's only 50,000 HP of walls to destroy here. We should be absolutely fine. I did call for an army of the nearest vassals, and they have indeed come to help us. I actually helped out Epiphyria in a, um, well, in a, a somewhat sticky situation. She was actually being attacked by a minor faction lord, and she was just about to be murdered. She was just, she was going to be defeated and indeed captured or maybe even killed. So let's see if we can get some really cool moments like we had in the previous episode. I'm actually looking forward to it. Yeah, well, yes, as you can see right here, this is much better. Look at that. That is craziness, craziness. Okay, so, uh, hello. Oh, there's actually a lot of you. Okay, hello there. Let's do some damage. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, that was a little bit too close for my liking. Oh my, okay. We're gonna have to be a bit cautious here. I did not realize that they respawned right in that area. I actually thought to myself, oh yes, we should have a pretty easy time of murdering the people that are running away, because obviously they are indeed running. But uh, no, no, <laughs> that is not the case, <laughs> apparently. All right, but yeah, I think we should be absolutely fine. I don't think there are any more reinforcements coming in here. Bear in mind that this garrison was actually pretty significant. They had quite a lot of units, and I was a bit worried about it. That's why I started to call for more and more vassals as time went on. Got to be a bit careful here as well. Don't really want to get myself killed by this guy. Ugh, terrible, terrible hits from me right there. Ah, get him. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. That was nice. All right, that is indeed a victory for us. And we ended up losing about 17 units, which is great. I think there was a, an army of about 180 units around here. And it seems like they have disappeared or gone somewhere else. Not entirely sure where they've gone, but I'm actually going to be going on to Amatatis in just a second. So we're actually just going to go into the trade screen real fast. And there you go. All right, 58,000 is what we're going to be gaining. And bear in mind that uh, we're actually gaining profit it every aha yes as i expected they are wanting to make peace against the western empire we're getting 9300 tribute daily i think this is probably the greatest tribute that i've seen so far and yeah i'm actually gonna make peace with them i'm happy to make peace with them i maybe could have persuaded them otherwise if i had spent a lot of influence to do so but i kind of wanted to i don't know i kind of wanted to have a little bit of a security i suppose with jao maris because of course we've just taken it it's very weakened in terms of the um in terms of the current garrison and we are actually going to be taking this this is exactly why i was talking about previously providing a relatively strong fief to a newly acquired vassal and I'm talking about Maranath there, of course, because Maranath, while it is extremely prosperous and a very good fief indeed, I'm not really hurting in terms of cash. I don't need an additional source of income because we are gaining a significant amount nevertheless every single day. And now I've bankrupted Jalmaris for no reason because I actually thought that maybe I wouldn't be getting it. But I am indeed, so I am very pleased about that. Anyway, let's go in and manage the town a little bit. I think that generally giving fiefs to somewhat weaker vassals actually might indeed help them to become stronger over time. And that's the kind of thing you want, isn't it? Don't you want all of your units, or, well, shall we say all of your potentially loyal 
because <laughs> we don't know whether he's going to leave us yet, but potentially loyal people to have a better time constructing their armies and growing better and stronger and more deadly towards the enemy as much as you want. I think that's actually kind of cool. Anyway, increases your damage with 200 weapons by 20% when your hit points are below 50%. This is actually a pretty cool trait. I like what they're doing with this. Increases your damage with 200 weapons by 15% when your hit points are above 90. <laughs> Ah, oh, if you excuse the, uh, yes, if you excuse the laughter, no, I will be taking Berserker because I am never, ever going to have above 90% hit points. Not in a million years. I think the other one is definitely going to give us much more. All right, so yeah, we're going to just be taking the uh, various perks and tactics that I don't think do anything at the moment, as I say, unless my perk mod fixes a couple of those and makes them work, but I don't know that. Anyway, gain 20% more influence from personal actions. Clan members gain 10% more influence. I'm going to do 20% more influence from personal actions because that is quite obviously what is going to be going down here. All right, so I'm actually trying out something from the Improved Garrisons mod. And uh, I personally, I feel like this particular mod gives you so many different options. It's really quite fantastic. They give you the option to have a patrol that goes around a particular area of territory that you want to safeguard as much as possible. It also gives you the opportunity to tell that patrol to follow you if you so desire. I obviously have not used that functionality yet. I might not. It really depends. But I'm currently using it as a patrol rather than supporting myself. Otherwise, it also has the opportunity to recruit pl uh, p people, players, uh, not players, that's for sure, because this isn't co-op. Can you imagine Bannerlord co-op? That would be crazy, crazy fun. I was actually going to say we'll try to attack the Southern Empire, but I think this actually requires more of our attention at this point. The Kuzate are basically our only opponents at this point. It seems like it always works out that way. No matter what faction I play as, including playing as the Kuzate themselves, because I actually did play as the Kuzate in the Kuzate Carnate series, but then I later broke off around episode 20 to create my own faction, and then in, in the end we actually went up against the Kuzate as well, which is actually hilarious. Anyway, let's have a look and see how much money Amatatus actually has in here. Yeah, there we go, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, 76,000, 35,000 from shields and ranged weapons alone, and then we can just sell a number of other goods here without too much problem. I'm actually going to buy all of the grain as well. And then we'll move on. There we go. Now, what I actually wanted to do and what my plan was, I was actually wanting to take Sestadime Castle and maybe even Lycaron itself. Because I am, if you've noticed, still running around with an army in tow. And personally, I feel like that is, well, it's pretty good, you know. It's pretty good to still have an army that is relatively strong. Unfortunately, most of my vassals here don't have a huge amount of units. So they might very well succumb to the rigors of siege combat relatively soon. But yeah, actually, by the way, there are a whole bunch of vassals dying from old age, if you can believe it. So yeah, old age is actually starting to catch up to people now. And I'm kind of wondering, how is Iceni doing? She's 38. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> she's probably not going to die that soon then. Ah, uh, now I've jinxed myself. Fantastic. Atrion Castle. I have no idea how many units are actually in here. So I'm actually just going to... Oh, 290? <laughs> All right. Okay. I guess I'm going to go for the... Um... The quick and dirty method. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, what? 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 Mantios died of old age? How old was he? How old was he? Let me actually have a look. This is crazy. He was only 64. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. He was only 64. But that's absolutely fine because his son will now take over or whoever else. Because I remember in Warband, the AI was a little bit higgledy-piggledy. They didn't really know what they were doing. They were a little bit, you know, all over the place. And, um somewhat ineffective most of the time so it's really nice to see that they have refined them in such a significant manner okay now i've, I've got to be a little bit careful here because i don't really want to 
uh, go super hard against these enemies because you never know when they're going to actually murder you. <laughs> uh, yes, it, it, it's more often than you think, yes. More often than you think. Okay, come on now. Oh, nice. Oh, that was a nice hit. Very good. That was not too damage. Oh, that's, oh, okay. That, those are my guys. Those are my guys. Don't have to kill them. Can you tell I was thinking about jumping? Yes, I was actually thinking about jumping. I thought to myself, hmm, is there enough trajectory to be able to jump onto that area over there? I might, you know what? I might actually have enough in athletics to be able to make that work. Do you think I could make it? Let's try it, shall we? Just for science. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, I made it. I made it. I mean, you know, I kind of thought I would die there, to be honest, because the, um, <laughs> as you can quite clearly tell, the elevation is way too, way too high. Way, way, way too high. But it was for science, after all, so I'm perfectly happy to do it. I mean, we're going to restore ourselves relatively quickly anyway, although my medicinal skill is pretty awful, to be honest. So it's really not going to do that much but it's going to be enough i suppose anyway uh yeah we're, we're pretty good I, I think i can actually continue onward right here there's kanujan i might like to try and persuade him if at all possible what, what's he doing is he really wanting to fight that caravan that's actually a huge mistake on his part if he if he what why is he fighting that that is a huge mistake i'm going to help the uh Oh, actually, you know what? I want to speak to him. Uh, th oh, it's, it's kind of annoying, isn't it? I don't really want to let this caravan die, but I kind of have to if I want to speak to him. Or not, as the case may be. Ah, oh, there we go. Whew. Okay, I was, I was actually thinking to myself, is he really going to escape with disorganization still uh, afflicting him? Apparently, yes. Okay. Well, let's have a look. Ooh, okay, that was basically the linchpin right there. Pretty much if I was unable to get him from the first conversation option, then that's it. You know, there's no way I'm going to be able to get him. Oh? Oh, okay. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, uh, a little bit of a roller coaster there. A little bit of a roller coaster. Okay, so this guy obviously is going to have an insane amount of money, as you can quite clearly tell. Absolutely insane. So, um, let me actually see what I can do here. Right. <laughs> yes, that's not going to be enough. Okay, what about Jamaris? Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is this is looking pretty nice, actually. This is looking pretty good. That does nothing. Fiefs are basically the thing to be trading with pretty much all the time. So let me actually just see here. Hongard Castle is not something that I really care about dramatically. So I could potentially do something with that. Huh. Let me see now. Okay, so... Jamaris will do this, and then Argaron adding that would make it a little bit harsh. What about Hongard? Ah. This is now this is problematic because here's the thing: I really do want to get Argaron because this is going to give us a pretty significant striking point with which to attack the Kuzate from. You know what I mean? It's going to be a friendly town in otherwise unfriendly territory. And it could be very important to us. Jalmaris is something that I have literally just taken. I don't really mind whether um, he takes that instead of Argaron. I personally feel like it's perfectly acceptable. But I don't want to trade any of these other castles. And especially towns as well. Rote is kind of my inroad to other areas like um, Amatatis, for example. That is something that I don't really want to give up at this point. Sionon is just way too good. And Epicrotia, well, we know how we feel about Epicrotia. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Unless I remove Hongard Castle, potentially. No, wait a minute. Uh, unless I remove Argaron, I can actually make this easily work if I literally just give him that. 
<sighs> I mean, he's going to be a super strong vassal for us. So I'm going to, I'm going to give him a hundred thousand. I mean, we know how good he can be. He's really, really good. So, <laughs> yeah, there's going to be people. There's going to be people out there face palming right now. And for that, I apologize. However, we do have to try and grow our ranks just a little bit, you know. We can't just stay around with the same amount of clans. Otherwise, we're eventually going to dwindle down and down and down as more death and destruction befalls everyone in the Sturgeons. Because that seems to happen quite often. So I'm actually going to do that. And we got these guys to join us. Now, this might be a mistake, but I think we might be pleasantly surprised. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. He has a lot of money. And if he's able to bring that money and actually help the faction in a significant way, then that's pretty much all I can ask of him, pretty much. So, as you can see, he's Clan Tier 4, but that doesn't really matter because if he has significant influence in general, he's going to be pretty good, you know? He's going to be pretty good. So I'm actually just going to give him a whole bunch of influence as well, just because we can. And then we're going to move on and we'll see what we can do. I'm going to actually try to call for him into the army here as well because he's right nearby to us. So he might as well join us. And as you can see, because he's joined us, by the way, on top of the fact that he has joined us, he's also brought over Argaron and um, I think he brought over... Wait a minute. Didn't he bring over some castles as well? I actually... Yeah, these... <laughs> okay. These castles are basically pointless. There's... There's pretty much no reason why we would need those, but whatever, you know, not a big deal, not a big deal. Anyway, let's go over to Gauss Castle, see if we can maybe take that. I'm on the lookout for Fenton as well, by the way. Fenton is actually a very good vassal too for us to potentially try to persuade. So now that we have such a significant army, we should be able to take at least one more thing. We're going to go for a huge amount of cohesion here. I'm thinking Mysaia. Shall we go hard? We'll go home? Yeah, I think we'll go hard here for the, for, for the most part. Let's see. Oh, there's only 385 in the garrison? Ooh, I think this might be a little bit too late. Look at that. There's a Kuzade army breathing down our necks. And, uh, well, I think it's definitely going to be a bit too late for them. They're not really going to be able to do too much to us right here as we enter the snowy landscape of Mysaia and attempt to take it. Now, of course, technically what I could have done was literally just... Auto resolve. I could have auto resolved this without too many difficulties. Well, we are now almost through the inner gate, and uh, I can kind of tell that the Imperials. Uh, well, uh, Imperials? Why, wait a minute. Why are we fighting Imperials here? Mysaia? Isn't that uh, isn't that under control by the Kuzate? This is very strange. It must be that they. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. They probably had a defector, didn't they? Yes. They probably had a defector join them. That is exactly what's going on here. Oh, that is intriguing. Oh, yes. I always love it when the AI decides to leave their original faction because it definitely shows more of the organic nature of the game's systems because that means that the player is not doing anything, you know? The player is not interfering in the affairs of the various vassals in the game world. They're basically just a bystander in all of the intrigue and the coercion and persuasion efforts that the vassals, the AI, might potentially have. And I think that's actually very cool. So that's definitely, uh, it's nice to see. It's actually really nice to see. I know that there are defections quite often, but not in wartime. Wartime doesn't really happen that often. And uh, bringing a thief over, like my Zaya, is actually quite significant. I'm, actually, I'm gonna check, actually. I'm gonna check after this and see just what's going on with Mysaia's owners because it might very well be that the owner is indeed an Imperial or it might just be that they have a bunch of Imperial garrison units in here for some unknown reason but anyway I am actually getting stopped by one of those ammunition barrels thank you very much and uh, yeah I believe that is indeed a victory gotta say I really love the environments in Bannerlord I feel like they've done a great job on that Every single time I walk around a castle and go on the walls, I think to myself, wow, this actually looks really, really nice. 
But yeah, I was kind of worried about that. That's also the reason why I thought to myself, maybe I'll auto-resolve this, you know? Maybe I'll auto-resolve it so that no one ends up dying. And um, yeah, now Hecard is dead. <laughs> what a classic. What a classic. That is exactly what I did not want to have happen. But it's okay because we've taken it and that's all that really matters. And now bear in mind that Hecard, let me actually just have a look here. He was 55, so it is highly likely that he was going to perish relatively soon anyway. And he does have a, num a number of successes, as you can see right here. And Peric um, is the guy that has taken over, and he has some pretty decent skills himself. He's only 36, actually 35, so that is, in my opinion, pretty good. So that's not too bad. Anyway, we have Carter's realm here. C Carter's realm? No, Carter's army right here. And we might... Do we want to attack? I think we might want to attack and just go for a very swift auto-resolve against these. Hey, you know what? I think that's a bit too much to auto-resolve. So I think I'm just going to go in here, have our people put as many troops in my Zaire as we possibly can. And now that we have Argoron under our control as well, we can pretty much just write our own ticket anytime we want, which is pretty fantastic. So let me actually just sell a bunch of things here. And we might get some more food, although I do have 120 days worth, which is pretty significant as it is, so probably not even necessary. There we go, another 42,000 right there. And I think I might actually tell my forces to just leave, although we haven't really, I mean, we haven't really lost that much. But I think we're actually going to disband for the moment, and then we'll just stay within my Zaire and kind of keep it safe for the most part because it's more than likely that oh oh very nice more than likely that that army will disband at some point in the near future and we're just gonna auto resolve against this guy real fast take him down and try to increase our relation with a couple of people as well which is really nice oh i missed a shield maiden mm, i'm sorry yeah someone mentioned in the comments that shield maidens would be perfect for iceni because they are indeed very much in keeping with the theme and because obviously iceni is a female viking warrior it's obviously going to make sense for her to have some wonderful uh, shield maidens slash valkyries and uh yeah i'm, I'm gonna be on the lookout for those i actually don't know how to get those more often hmm i'm gonna have to maybe look that up or see if i can find out how to do that but anyway kenojan has created an army already how big is that 800 wow that's actually pretty significant Let's give him a cut. Let's give him a bit more influence so that he can continue to run around with that army. That seems pretty nice to me. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, then please leave a like. Otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>